Hey, announcer guy here for Sean and Kevin, world travelers who occasionally go to places you haven't been. In this episode, the boys are in Canada. So settle in and welcome to Travel by Numbers. Located in the community of Bowmanville, Ontario, Canada, Camp 30 began in 1927 as a school for delinquent youths prior to being converted into a Canadian-run prisoner of war camp for the highest ranking German POWs captured by the Allied forces during World War II. Sports played an important role at the school. The Natatorium would have been one of the first indoor pools in Canada. It was well used by both the boys at the training school and Bowmanville community. And during wartime, the POWs took up the Canadian sport of hockey by building an ice rink in the winter. Built in 1928, House 4, otherwise known as Victoria Hall, housed many of the POWs and is closest to Lambs Road. It was the site of one of the most famous escape attempts. The army was digging a tunnel under Lambs Road and had lighting wired in and a ventilation system installed using tin cans. Supports were every one to two meters and were made from wood from attics within the camp. The dirt excavated was disposed of using a trolley system and men passing a bucket up to the attic through a hole in the ceiling. In September 1943, before the completion of the tunnel, the ceiling collapsed, revealing the activity to the guards. It was Otto Kretschmer the Germans were trying to free. They had a submarine waiting on the east coast for him. Kretschmer held the record for sinking the most ships, 47, a total of 274,333 tons. He only actively participated in the first 18 months of the war and was the famed captain of U-Boat 99. As for the incomplete tunnel, it was collapsed by the Canadian Guards. The boys' training school had support from private and public sectors, visionary leadership, and a dedicated professional staff. The local service clubs in Bowmanville helped sponsor the various dormitories. The boys were encouraged to engage in community activities and become upstanding citizens through their experience. Three German generals were housed here in the General's House between 1941 and 1945. The POW camp inside the watchtowers and barbed wire was run by the highest ranking officers. All escape attempts had to be approved. And while there were many escapes from Camp 30, none were successful. All escapees were recaptured and returned 
to one of the 40 prisoner of war camps in Canada. The cafeteria was built to house 300 students. During its time as a prisoner of war camp, every meal had at least two sittings to accommodate the number of POWs. For three days in 1942, the cafeteria was the main site of the rebellion against the shackling of 100 men, a direct order from Churchill in reprisal from the manacling of Canadian soldiers in Germany. Prisoners barricaded themselves in the cafeteria, arming themselves with bats, bottles, and hockey sticks, so they'd be equally matched. During later incidents in the battle, which spanned several days, one prisoner was wounded by gunfire, another prisoner was bayoneted, and a Canadian soldier suffered a skull fracture from a thrown jar of jam. The Battle of Bowmanville ended when Canadian guards repelled into the building from the clustery and subdued the rioters. After calm had returned, 126 of the prisoners were transferred to other camps. The Jury Lodge was named for Mr. John H. H. Jury. He attended a speech by esteemed academic J. Alex Edmison in Toronto in 1922. The topic of the speech was juvenile delinquency. Jury was so impressed by Edmondson's speech and theory that he immediately proposed to donate his farm on the outskirts of Bowmanville to the province of Ontario if they would build a training school for underprivileged boys following the theory promoted by Edmondson. Mr. Jury was a horticulturist and one of his business ventures was Brookdale Kingsway Nursery. It's likely that he had an influence on the plantings on the campus. To the south, there's a grove of catalpa trees, recognizable by their large leaves and long bean fruit. Strangely, the POWs could sign themselves out of the camp on a day pass. They would not try to escape as they had given 
their word of honor. And often they could be found swimming in Lake Ontario, just four kilometers south of the camp. Camp 30 was run as a POW camp from 1941 to 1945, after which it returned to its previous date as a boys' training school. In September 2013, Camp 30 was designated a National Historic Site of Canada. If you enjoyed today's episode, please click the like button. And by subscribing and turning notifications on, you'll help us create new content. Thanks for watching. And remember, experiences, not things.